People pleasing is something that so many of us struggle with, myself included. People pleasing is actually what we call fawning. It is a stress response. So we have four stress responses, fight, flight, freeze, and fawn, and people pleasing sits under the fawning. So oftentimes it's a learned behavior from our childhood when we don't feel safe or when we're seeking to get validation, love, approval, and all of these things. And we learn different behavioral tendencies in order to achieve those goals. As a child, we, we are all ego driven from the ages of zero to seven. It's all about safety, right? We're at our most vulnerable. We're the most dependent on our parents at that time. So those are the times, those are the years that we will tend to develop our people pleasing tendencies. People pleasing can come about for many different reasons. So sometimes our parents will place a lot of responsibility on us and we will feel burdened or obligated to meet those responsibilities. If our parents are controlling, if there has been trauma, if there is a lot of kids in the family and we're all struggling for attention, these are the things that can definitely develop or cause us to develop people pleasing tendencies. It is purely a survival mechanism. So we're coping with whatever the threat is or we're coping with whatever the situation is by thinking that we need to abandon our needs and instead please the people around us in order for us to feel safe. However, when we grow up, these people pleasing tendencies tend to follow us until we become aware of them. And when we're aware of them, often we've been doing it for so long, it can be really hard habit to break. I know I've definitely been there <laughs> for sure. So often when we're people pleasing there, it's not just about saying no or having better boundaries, which is just a very superficial level. If we dig into the root cause, there's often a deeper fear of being rejected, of hurting other people, of not living up to expectations, of disappointing people and or feeling guilty. So all of these fears reside in our body. And anytime we go to speak up or tell our truth or be authentic, then we get smothered or overwhelmed with these fears. And if we're not aware of it, it can be very subconscious. So we'll start to automatically shift into our automatic behaviors, saying yes when we wanna say no, or agreeing with what someone says, even though secretly in our mind, we're like, I don't agree with that, but we don't feel safe enough or confident enough or have the ability to speak up because we have this fear of not fitting in or not belonging or being rejected or being abused or whatever it might be. So I think that the first key to healing people pleasing tendencies is to understand the fears that are driving this behavior for you. Everyone's gonna be a little bit different. Everyone's got different upbringings, different ways of protecting themselves. And so it is really important to understand what it is that you're protecting yourself actually from. The second thing I think that has been absolutely key in terms of, for me, working through my own people pleasing tendencies is to have the language and the communication skills about how to communicate your truth. It's one thing to know your truth. It's another thing to communicate it. So I've been working a lot with nonviolent communication. It is the most amazing way of communicating that I have found. And I can definitely talk more about that later on. I think the other thing that is also really important is if we've been people pleasing for some time, we are basically abandoning our needs, desires, and wants in favor of pleasing other people. And this becomes automatic. So once we get to a point where we're like, right, I want to work on my people pleasing tendencies. This is not serving me anymore. It's actually draining my energy. And then we start to do the inner work, the shadow work and the inner child work. It's like, oh, hang on. I need to actually, first of all, allow myself to have needs because I think so many of us, especially women, have grown up having a lot of expectations, societal pressure, family pressure, where our needs have been secondary to other people. And so it's first of all, allowing yourself to even have needs in the first place. And then secondly, understanding what are my needs? What do I need in order to feel good, happy, content, in balance, in peace and harmony? A really good little flag, or a red flag is that if you're feeling positive or grateful or happy, it just is an expression that all your needs have been met. But if you're feeling negative, like angry, frustration, resentment, guilt, shame, all of those low vibrational emotions, it generally means that they are an expression of an unmet need. So if you're feeling in a negative sense, then it's important to ask yourself, what is the need that I have that's not being met in this moment? A little secret thing is that we actually all have the same needs. They just present in very different ways. So we all have a need for validation. We all have a need for love. We all have a need for approval, for recognition, to belong. And all of these needs, they're human needs. It doesn't matter whether you're female or male from this country, from that country. It doesn't matter. We all have the same needs. They will just present in very different ways. 
So once you can understand what your needs are, then it is a matter of meeting and having strategies and tools in your tool belt to meet your own needs. If we are not able to meet our needs, that's when we will project them out onto other people, including our negative emotions. So we will basically gossip or we will vent or we will just clear out all of these negative emotions about or to another person without realizing that in actual fact, it's just a sign that we have an unmet need. And if we can just simply work through that need within our own self and have tools and strategies to meet that need, then we won't actually have the need to feel or we won't feel those negative emotions. We'll have a different emotional reaction to the situation at hand. People pleasing is complex. <laughs> I know that's a lot of information. Basically, our negative emotions are an expression of an unmet need. If we are people pleasing or we have tendencies towards people pleasing, it is generally because we have abandoned our needs in favor of pleasing other people. So the practice then is coming back to you and working out what are my needs? What do I need in order to feel safe, loved, secure, protected, content, peaceful and happy? If you want more support, please reach out. I have done so much work on this myself and I know it's not an easy journey and I definitely couldn't have done it without support myself. So you can book in for a Reiki and coaching session with me. I do have some online resources as well about protecting your energy because we all know that boundaries is not just physical, it's also emotional, mental and spiritual and energetic as well. So please book in for a Reiki and coaching session or you can DM me for any questions. Love to see you soon.